Hey everyone. So in this video, as the title suggests, I want to talk about my current project, Color Paper Negatives. And I'm using a 4x5 camera to shoot them. So before I get into what color paper negatives are, uh, let me just run down quickly for those who haven't seen or used a 4x5 camera. So I have a 4x5 camera, as you can see. This is a Graflex uh, speed graphic uh, pacemaker, and it is a 4x5. And the 4x5 is actually in, uh, as it relates to, to this, is, let me pull this off, the size of the film, four inches by five inches. Um, this is a large format. <laughs> Uh, it's not the largest, right? You've got 8x10 and such, but uh, it is definitely a large format and kind of an interest, interesting thing for you purely digital shooters out there. Uh, this lens that I have on here is a 150 millimeter f3.5. The angle of view and depth of field kind of comparison, the equivalence or whatever, full frame 35 millimeter equivalent, would be about a 40 millimeter f.95 with this lens. So yeah, shallow. Um, incidentally, built into this camera, you can also tilt and shift the, the lens. You can raise the lens up and you can tilt it back. So uh, it gives you flexibility there to do kind of technically it's you know great for architectural and landscape stuff but you know also just cr general creative use and you focus with these wheels here um, which is you know it is what it is so the lens is actually on a lens board and you have, you take these locks off and the lens comes off You've got a viewfinder for seeing, you know, for kind of framing it up, or you can use the, the ground glass in the back uh, to do that. There is on this one, on mine anyway, a rangefinder. That's this. So I can look through here, and as I focus, you know, I've, I've got the split image to, to see, you know, to make sure that I'm in focus. And I've just recently set it up for this lens because I was using a different lens until um, until basically a couple of days ago I started I set the camera up for this. So yeah, you do have to re set up the uh, the rangefinder and the focusing when you sw swap lenses. But yeah. So anyway, uh, now this ground glass is about on plane with where the film will be, which goes in to this slot here. So you can see it. You slide the cartridge in there. Um, each film holder holds one piece of film per side. So you, you know, you put the film in, you pull out the, the dark slide, you take your shot, put the dark slide back, you open it up, like pull the film cartridge the, uh, the film holder out, spin it around, put it back in for the second shot. Uh, and then of course I have my little release cable here. So the lens that I have been using is this one, which is a Kodak lens. Uh, it's a 127 millimeter f4.7. So yeah, kind of like a 35 1.4, I think, somewhere in there. Uh, but anyway, Cool, 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 cool. So what is paper negative? Well, paper negative is shooting on paper instead of film. And the specific paper that we're using is enlarging paper or darkroom paper. Uh, this is the paper that you use to uh, make prints from film. So you actually, typically, the normal use is you have the paper on the enlarging table, you have, you know, the, the enlarger system or camera light shining through it. Um, 
you know, through the film, basically, the, the already processed film, and that light comes down and hits the enlarging paper. And that exposes and makes an image. There's black and white enlarging paper for use with black and white film. And then there is color enlarging paper for use with color film. It gets a bit tricky, um, but I decided to use color uh, paper for the this project. So I've already done uh, black and white paper negatives, and color paper negatives was something that was of high interest for me. There's not a lot out there as far as that I could find that was, um, I guess, more than a few random tests that people have done. So I wanted to kind of take it a little bit further and just see where I could go with it and try a bunch of different things. And also I did have an idea of how to, to do this uh, that I didn't see anybody else having. So I'm going to share that with you in this video. Uh, but basically, some of the, the issues with shooting color paper negatives in, over regular paper negatives or film. Um, well, for one, the color. The color enlarging paper is extremely blue sensitive. So when the light comes in, Right? Like if it's it basically when the light comes in, it's going to be crazy overexposed. It's going to be very, very blue. And the resulting image, if I can pull one of my negatives here, this is a good one to show you. The resulting image uh, on the negative is going to be red, right? Like once you process it, it becomes a negative image. So, here is one of the first negatives that I did. And keep in mind, I already went into it knowing that it was going to be very blue sensitive. And as a quick test for this, I put uh, a full CTO gel or color, color, uh, color temperature orange gel um, behind my lens. So you could think of this as setting my camera's white balance to tungsten instead of daylight. And this was the result. That is really, really red, really, really red, deep, deep color. Now, immediately I knew, okay, we didn't, we didn't quite get the, the color correct. And, you know, other people had done the orange color correction on their lens and they've gotten somewhat similar results and have said that they needed like massive amounts of color correction in post uh, to fix it, but colors just never quite came out right. Uh, so I knew that, that was going to be the case, and I tried other things. <clears throat> and, you know, I also had a, a UV filter on there because I, I know that the paper is a little UV um, uh, sensitive. So I figured, okay, let me just start at the beginning. How is this paper, or I guess what is this paper expecting, right? Well, it's expecting to be used in a dark room setting. It's expecting to be receiving light from a, an incandescent bulb shot through a cut of exposed and processed film. So why don't I try to recreate those conditions in the camera? And so what I came up with was uh, I basically put my CTO gel, because I'm doing cheap tests, <laughs> CTO gel, the UV gel, and a cut of exposed but blank film. Uh, it's actually uh, 120 film from... Hasselblad and or meaning format I guess in general but uh, I put them behind the lens like this I just taped it on there so got the lens like that if I uh, if I open it up 
Might be able to see. You won't be able to see through it. <laughs> you kind of can. But anyway. So that's... That's basically it. That's all I did. And... I shot like that. Now I was expecting it to be very close. It was closer. But I also did have some issues in the dark room that were kind of my own fault. And so I expect to, to see, uh, see that corrected in the future. So when I processed this test, um, I did a couple of, of mistakes. One, one mistake was I just kind of eyeballed the temperature of the chemicals, um, whereas in the first test, I was accurate. I mean, you can tell I was accurate with the chemicals because look at that white border. That border is white, right? This, if this film was, if this, this was anything like color or, or darker or anything like that, then you'd know that my processing was incorrect. And two, kind of like an idiot, uh, when I was in the in processing, I had set all the exposed sheets down on on the ground before I put them in the tray. I know I'm developing in trays instead of in a drum, which I should switch to. But again, going inexpensive with this project at first. Uh, I set them down on the ground, and they kind of fell into a loose stack, which, of course causes problems but here is one of those shots now you can see the lines on it uh, from the the stacking pre pre uh, processing and you can see right here it's not quite white I don't know if it's gonna focus on it or not it's not quite, there we go. It's not quite white here. It's like a beigey pinkish color. And this shot that Daniel took of me, same thing, right? Little kind of pink tinge to it. So my temperature of the chemicals wasn't quite right. And, um, you know, I stacked. But these shots actually came out pretty good. I think that it, in my next test, I'm going to try this again, but I'm going to try it with precision on the chemicals again, uh, like the first test. I have a feeling it's going to get closer, but I don't think it's going to be quite there. One issue that I had, which you could look at by looking at these negatives, is they're still too blue, right? The, the negative is still too warm. And... So it's problematic, right? Like this should be this this should be neutral, right? This this kind of like wall behind me should be neutral. It's a white wall, just gray, um, because of the lighting. So that should be neutral. It shouldn't be pink, and it is not. <laughs> that should end up being a gray kind of color. So there's there's more to it than. Uh, the chemical mixing for sure. And I think that I need to add another cut of CTO gel, but I also saw somebody using an unusual filter. It's, it's called a YA2 filter. It's, it's an orange filter. Uh, and then that was it. They just used that one filter to shoot. So I'm going to try that as well. <laughs> um, but this is fun. This is a fun experience. Here's the here's the the resulting images. I guess the first uh, batch followed by the second batch. And you can see the first batch. The color is not quite right. And in the second batch, uh, you know, color. I did do some correcting to this uh, the color on them, but it's better. It is better. At least I think so. <laughs> so yeah. Why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because 
I think it's a good idea to experiment. It's a good idea to, to have fun and have projects like this. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, for a time, I guess, uh, for a while, um, over the past year, I was kind of over it, I guess you'd say with photography, video production, and all that. Like, I I was feeling a little bit like, um, I I don't know how to describe it exactly, but kind of, you know, just burnt out, fate, uh, jaded, or whatever, you know, like, new camera release comes out, and it's like some crazy cool thing, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, woo. But... Um, doing a project like this really helped me, even though I'm not doing it for anything in particular, it really helped me kind of get that spark back and like remind myself why I like doing this stuff, why I like taking photos and why I like shooting video. And so, yeah, so I think that every once in a while you should stop and do a project, just kind of a whether it's simple or complex, personally, I like the complex. I like the ones where you're doing trial and error, just trying to, to find the right combination of things to make this obscure thing work for you. Um, those are the kind of projects I like the most, and that's what I recommend you to do. But if you want to do a simple project because you're tired of complex ones, then by all means, anything that makes you kind of reinvigorate yourself uh, into your passions and, and make sure you don't lose them. And yeah, so that's where I'm at now. As I shoot more tests and get to the point where I I want to be with this, I know the color is not going to be exactly right. Like it, as far as I can tell, it just n- never will be, but uh, it'll look right enough to the people who were not there in the moment. Um, but what I want to get to on it is kind of a, a more stable position where I can pretty reliably uh, intuit, I guess, how it's going to turn out. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. So the experimenting process continues. I will post um, more of these experiment images on my Instagram, uh, probably my Twitter. I should probably do that too. (laughs) Uh, And yeah, you leave a comment down below. What do you think about color paper negatives? If you have any questions about color paper negatives or paper negatives in general or four by five photography, uh, let me know. And also, what do you do to, uh, what was the last thing that you did to kind of keep that spark for you? Uh, I'd like to know Yes, all of that. I should probably end this video now. So thanks for watching, everyone.